In the early 1970s, Dot Dao and his family were refugees from war-torn Vietnam. After Dot's brother was admitted to medical school at the University of Minnesota, his family moved to Minneapolis into Riverside Plaza, a newly opened apartment complex home to a thousand other Vietnamese refugees. Dot soon enrolled at the U of M himself and quickly rose up the academic ladder. They gave me the, the, uh, the uh, letter to send me to Harvard for a master degree of, uh, what is it, urban regional planning. I didn't go. Dot Dao had been a librarian in Vietnam, a career path that suited him just fine despite an invitation to Harvard. My professor asked me, what do you want to do? I told him I, I used to be a librarian. I would like to be a librarian again. Dot stayed at Riverside in part because of the same reason he came, to be around his fellow countrymen and women as they adjusted to their new American lives. At that time, uh, the Vietnamese refugees coming here a lot, about a thousand people. A lot of doctors, professionals, students, and we went to the U. And uh, we have a lot of friends in here. And uh, we get used to the, uh, with the community and with the American uh, life. Two decades later, and the story was essentially the same for Khadija Ali. I feel uh, uh, like I am in back home. Many of my people live here, include my, fa my family, friends, relatives, and co-workers, and so on. Khadija arrived at Riverside shortly after migrating from Somalia in 1996. Not long after moving into Riverside, her son was born. Khadija says she appreciates being able to raise her family with the strong support of the large Somali community that surrounds her. We are telling the people we, lo we love here, Riverside Plaza, because the uh, majority of the Somali uh, community lives here. We support each other, we help each other. It's a nice place to live and you know, I, and I tell you it is a convenient, convenient and comfortable, comfortable place to live. If you live in or around Minneapolis, you're probably familiar with Riverside Plaza, the apartment complex just east of downtown that is home to more than 5,000 residents. With the 40-story McKnight building as its focal point, Riverside's multicolored facade has been home to diverse populations, many of them immigrants, since it opened in 1973. People want to live here. Um, they tell me that, in fact, people know about Riverside Plaza on the streets of Mogadishu. It's a good place to start your life in the United States. Freda Scobie has been with the Riverside Plaza Tenants Association, or RIPTA, for the past seven years. Along with the pride residents have for Riverside, Scobie says they also have their share of complaints about a complex of buildings that desperately needs renovation. We always have complaints about both heating and cooling. The system that has existed is not really responsive necessarily to the, to the weather or to the occupants. Thermostats that don't respond to the residents turning them up or down, elevators that are slow if they work at all, even apartments that can't get hot water. Freda says upgrades to Riverside are direly needed. Riverside Plaza has problems that are, without a rehab, will lead to its real destruction, I believe. Fortunately, Riverside Plaza's management team agrees with Freda. Something has to be done. As you look at the boiler plant, most of the equipment here is, is original. Gordon Willey has been with Riverside for 30 years, has been chief engineer most of those years, and says there is a lot to like about life at Riverside. For one thing, there are the stunning views of the surrounding Twin Cities and their suburbs, views that rival even the most luxurious apartment and condo complexes in downtown Minneapolis. But with age comes issues, and Riverside's management is determined to solve those problems. From the boilers to the bathrooms, to the windows to the parking lots, laundry rooms, and plaza, most of Riverside is being revamped starting in January 2011. The work, which will be complete in 2012, means a much more comfortable life for the residents at Riverside. For example, every unit will be getting new heating and cooling units. We will be modifying the control valve in the apartment for um, additional energy savings. We will be installing a fan control center, which will change the way that the fan unit is controlled. Windows will be rehabbed, allowing them to open more easily and keeping them more airtight when they're shut. Same goes for the sliding glass doors. So we're really hopeful that this is going to eliminate a lot of the draft problems and things like that for more comfort in the apartments. In the bathrooms, new plumbing will mean water that heats up much more quickly 
and toilets and sinks that drain as well as they should. What will be done in the bathrooms is the drain waste and vent piping will all be replaced in the bathrooms, the toilet connections. Um, some bathtubs will be replaced, um, some tile walls will be replaced. On the outside, Riverside's park-like center plaza, parking lots and walkways will also be getting a facelift. We're going to restore the original plaza lighting the way it was um, when the complex was completed. Um, we're going to try and get the clock that's on the plaza reactivated. As you walk around the perimeter of the complex, there were places where there were trees that were taken out that are now going to be new attempts to get new trees to grow in those locations. The upgrades will make life better for a community that Willie says has been a reflection of America and its world policies over the past four decades. It's been a cultural change every, every time. A lot of times it, it mirrors problems in the world right after you know things have been resolved between the United States and certain countries, Vietnam. You know, you start seeing an influx of immigrants from those, those countries and right now it's a you know, significant East African and Middle Eastern population. It's a real melting pot, all in one location. Riverside Plaza has a powerful cultural impact on the Twin Cities and Minnesota as a whole. And Freda says the management team at Riverside knows and appreciates that fact. I wondered when I first came to this job if I would be constantly quarreling with, with the administration. But they are more than legal, they are kind. And they understand this population. That's why it works. I always think, you know, this place could be torn down and gentrified and all gone. And, um, but administration, the owners, have an interest in providing good housing for lower income folks. That dedication is what led immigrants like Dot Dow to Riverside nearly 40 years ago. With the renovation plans now in place, Dot says he's excited to see the beauty of Riverside restored to the level it was when he first arrived. Very clean. Uh, perhaps cleaner than before. Now, one-time refugees like Khadija Ali know their home of many years will be as beautiful and comfortable as any place to live in Minneapolis, something Khadija says will be welcome relief to her fellow Somali tenants. They like it, and if they get, you know, uh, everything they needed, like, you know, good heating, I mean, system, and like, you know, uh, the elevators working well, and you know, they like it, and they are very excited in having that. The residents of Riverside will be getting all those things, making life better for another round of the newest generation of Americans.